Okay, everybody. Today we're going to be setting up a LaTeX document, and this document today is going to have some uh, mathematical presentation in it. So first of all, need to set up the TextWorks. Uh, so in this side, I've got here, I've got the uh, document class A4 paper 10 point article is what I've chosen to put in there. That's just to set up the type of document I'm trying to create. And because we're trying to create a mathematics document, uh, that would be a nice way to start. It's going to be in PDF output. Then I'll pick three packages for us to use today. When you're using LaTeX, package is very important. You can't just type anything in there. You need to use packages. So the packages today, I've got Fancy HDR. That's uh, for page setup, basically. So if you notice here, I've got these things here in the header and in the footer. I've got this one here. I'll explain those to you in a minute. That's what the Fancy HDR does. And then I'm going to be using uh, integrals so a nice little package for using integrals is big ints so that's a uh, package there to use and then a nice little neat package is last page so that will give you the last page on your document for the PDF output so here I've got page one of one I've typed nothing in there yet so that's why it's got one out of one but when you get to page seven it'll give you pages out of seven so that'll be page one out of seven if I had seven pages in there Okay, so now we're going to set up the page uh, presentation. So page style, using the fancy HDR package, you need to type in there backslash page style, all lowercase, and then curly brackets, uh, other brackets will not use, and just type fancy in lowercase and close the curly brackets. Then fancy HF, uh, just curly brackets, open and close straight away. Now you see here now I've got backslash C head, backslash R head, and backslash L head. Now in here I've got curly brackets with YouTube demo, some chief, and page setup. And if you look here, I've got page setup in the center, YouTube demo on the left, some chief on the right. And I've got L head YouTube demo. L is for left. C is for center so i've got page set up in the center and our head is right hand side of the header which is some chief so if i wanted to change these let's have a little mess around with these see what happens so c head i'll put that now to the left hand side so page set up will come to the left hand side let's put some chief on to the center and the youtube demo that writing on the right Let's run that now and see what we get. Everything's all moved now as we uh, allocated here. They've all moved. So there's something you can play around with there to suit your own presentation. And then R foot. So basically the R as in with the head. R is on the right hand side of the footer. And I've got page just on its own. Capital P. Backslash the page backslash space that's just to give it a bit of space uh, when you're showing the uh, page footer in the page number there so it's just created a nice little page between the one and the other otherwise things get a bit too close always think it's nice to have a space and then page reference so page reference is backslash page ref and that basically refers to every time on every page what the last page is so for example if you have a 20 page document last page will always be 20 so then this page one of 20 will then become page one of 20 instead of one of one. And then title, um, open and close curly brackets, then set counter. So basically your first page of this document will be page one. If you use to type page 10 in there, your first page will be page 10. Okay, so that's what I've got there. Next, I've got here begin document and end document. Always with LaTeX when you're doing a functions, You've got to open and close every time when you're doing all these uh, items in green. So begin document is in green, so I need to do an end document, which will also be in green, which will then link them up. OK, so as promised, we're going to do some uh, integrals. So let's put on here one integral. That's a nice little bit of type in there. Let's just write down here our first integral. So we're going to do backslash int for integral. 3x squared 
plus 4x cubed and then we want dx and because we have the mathematical uh, typing in here we've used the dollar sign to start it off we then have to have the dollar sign to close it off let's run that and see what it looks like so one integral all on one line an integral integral sign 3x squared plus 4x cubed dx now I'm not too pleased with the presentation of that so I'd like the one integral to be on its own line and then the integral itself on a separate line and that integral is looking a bit small it's not looking very professional so I'm going to improve that so to end the line there let's put a full stop there and then to end the line two backslashes that will then end the line let's see what happens to the document so now we've got the integral on its own line and now the integral there is a bit small so I want a bigger one now we've picked a package here called big ints so we can make use of that here by increasing the size of the integral symbol so we're going to type in there big int let's see what happens now we get a nice big integral sign big thick flat line 3x squared plus 4x cubed dx one thing I don't like here is this gap between the cubed and the dx is a bit tight so I'm going to put space in there so backslash space couldn't just write a space in there because nothing would happen so now I've got a space in there see if I was to take that backslash in there and just put a load of spaces in there even though I've got a big space in my typing in here big space in between the cubed and the dx what will happen on here still no gap so that's why you need to do the backslash so backslash and a space it's got loads of spaces there so let's see what happens now space is back okay that integral sign there quite happy with that at the moment but it looks a little bit big so let's try and make it a bit small so in the big int package you've got up to four s's you can do to make it a little bit smaller so I'll put all four s's, s's in there let's have a look see what happens to the integral sign so it's gone back to the smaller one so let's have something in the middle let's just have two s's that's looking a bit more pleasing so I'm quite happy with that now okay so another demonstration so let's put another presentation not demonstration presentation of an integral now if you're typing in a formula let's put space in there so we get a new line so if you're typing in a formula another one you can use is backslash square bracket and then on new line you can write in your big int ss and same integral 3x squared plus 4x cubed space dx and then all functions have to be closed off so there you go you see when I type in the back uh, square bracket the open square bracket at the beginning which is here flashes let's show you what happens there oh, wrong symbol there you go you see it flashed up there right let's run it see what happens okay so now we've got it in the center of the page looking very nice slightly bigger integral sign let's just see if we can make that a little bit smaller let's put another s in there see what happens to the size slightly smaller okay I like the look of that okay and then there's one other nice way of presenting uh, an integral or any any other formula let's try this one so you could have begin then open curly brackets a line I can remember how to spell a line asterisk okay let's go again with the big int we had three s's last time let's go the same again 3x squared plus 4x cubed dx with the space and whenever you have a function where you've got the begin you always have to end so like in the document we have begin document which is in green same as our line that's in green we've got an end document here so we simply just have to write end a line let's run it ok 
Okay, so another presentation is, and it's got the same presentation as here, again in the center. Okay, so this presentation here with the square brackets, nice for presenting a formula. So if you're just presenting the quadratic formula or a function or something like that, you could just leave it like that. If you want to show the demonstration of your answers and how to calculate the formula, you can go along with the big beginner line. Okay, so let's let's put uh, our answer in there. So can we remember how to integrate three x squared? Okay, so that's just going to be x cubed, and let's integrate four uh, x cubed. That's just going to be x to the four, and then let's not forget the constant multiple plus c. Let's run it, see what we look like. Okay, so a bit of a problem with the presentation here. It's all on one line. Don't like the look of that. That we know to change the line, we just need these two back lines. Two back slash there. So now it's going to be on its own line. Okay, so the alignment, not particularly happy with the alignment. I'd like things to be a little bit more in a line. So we pick the function here to be a line. Let's make use of it. So if we use the ampersand, put that in there so put an ampersand in there just before the 3x squared so here we might want the ampersand on the equal sign on the bottom this what this will do it will line up the ampersands down a line down the center of the page so let's run that now and see what happens okay so now we've got the function all in a line there so integral and the equal sign is all lined up nicely if you wanted to make it slightly different move the ampersand to before the equal sign see what happens okay so that's moved it across so we're not particularly happy with that one so that basically that's trying to make it align with this so i think i preferred where it was before so let's just put it back let's run it again okay so now i've got everything back in a line quite like the uh, presentation of that so I showed you earlier, I've got page one of one. Let's try and have a look at, uh, see what happens when you go to the next page. So one function you can do to clear the page and go on to the next page is backslash clear page. So let's run that, see what happens. Okay. Okay, so that's all good. So now we type new integral. Let's run it, see what happens. Okay, so now we've typed something in the new area. We've got page one of two. Here we are, new integral. It's now page two of two. This is the second page. So, okay, so let's type in a new integral. Let's type something with some... Uh, Greek letters. So we begin open brackets, curlies, a line with the asterisk, big int, and we like three s's, didn't we? So big integral. This time let's try a different function. Let's try a trig uh, function. So we do the integral of, let's say, cosine. And then I like to put it in the brackets, pi of x. So let's just type pi of x and see what happens. Let's not forget our dx. And then end the line. As we did before, earlier on, we put beginner line, end of line. So the same happens here, even though it's a new page. Let's run that. And this pi of x, see what that looks like on the page. Okay, so that's not really great, is it? So we've got an integral sine, cosine, that's great. And then pi of x, dx. So because we're using Greek notation, pi being a Greek symbol, use the backslash symbol again, see what comes up. Okay, so now we have the proper pi symbol in there. That's looking much nicer. Okay. Notice as well here, I put the cosine also with the backslash. See what happens with the cosine without the backslash. 
didn't like it so there we go so let's put the cosine with the backslash so it gave us a little error and that's because I had ended the line so if you put that like that with a line won't be happy so you got here an error coming up paragraph ended before a line was complete so if I take this line out here okay there we go now it's okay so now we begin to type in here so it's always good to remember you can't leave a gap like this so you must finish off your integral so equals and let's integrate cosine pi over x so the integration of pi is of, of cosine sorry is sine the input always remains the same when you do an integration so that's all good don't forget the constant multiple and then let's not forget the chain rule pi of x so when we're integrating we have to do oh, we have to uh, do the reciprocal of pi in the as a coefficient for the sine so we need to do 1 over pi so if we write 1 divided by pi now we've got a problem here now because the 1 divided by pi is just bringing up pi as a symbol so we could try typing this side let's see what happens there so 1 divided by pi sine pi of x plus c not particularly happy with that presentation so we need to improve on that so it looks like we've got 1 divided by pi sine of pi of x plus c so it looks like we've got the reciprocal there of something so basically we just want 1 over pi we don't want pi underneath everything else so we need to make a fraction so one function we've got here in our uh, tool bag is fraction which is frac frac and then the one in the curly brackets and we don't need this divide sign because the fraction will put it in for us so here we go so i've got fraction one in the first set of curly brackets that will be our numerator pi in the second set of curly brackets that will be our denominator and then the rest of the uh, the, uh, the solution sine pi x plus c let's run that now and see what happens you should see a bit of an improvement there now it's looking much better so we've got one over pi sine pi x plus c and that's looking much better okay so there we go that's a nice way to set up a document for mathematical formulas in particular integration thanks for watching and as always please remember to subscribe thanks very much